What's in my hand? Particles, okay. Atoms made up of protons, neutrons, and electrons, right? So there are, there are charged particles in there. There are charged particles in there. And we want to think about a number of different questions, okay? And the first question we want to talk about today is why are both charges attracted to my hand, which presumably is neutral, right? Now, someone said earlier, inducing a dipole. So we need to think about what that means. And we have to go back to what matter is made up of. And in my hand, we said matter it's made up of atoms. And so here is a cartoony picture of an atom. Here's the nucleus, which is positively charged. And then surrounding a nucleus are the electrons. And quantum mechanics tells us that we can't really know precisely where the electron is and how fast it's moving, what direction it's moving at any given time. So there's sort of a cloud of probability. There's some region surrounding the nucleus where it's very likely to find the electrons at any given time. Okay? So this is sometimes called the electron cloud. Okay? And ordinary atoms have the same number of protons and the same number of electrons, and the electron is essentially, the electron cloud is essentially centered around the nucleus. Okay? Let's say I bring a positively charged, charged object, like a point charge, like a bare proton or something like that, near this neutral atom. What's it going to do? How's it going to affect the atom? The electrons will be drawn closer to it. The electrons will be drawn closer to it, right? The electrons, how's the mass of an electron compared to the mass of the nucleus? It's very, very small, right? So if anything's going to move here, it's going to be the electrons. The nucleus is essentially very massive, okay? So we can treat the nucleus as essentially staying still. The electrons are very light. They're free to float around. And this positive charge is going to attract the electrons. So the electron cloud actually shifts a little bit due to the, the attraction. And so this is kind of an exaggerated picture. The real shift might be only a fraction of a width of a, uh, of a, of a nucleus, but it's big enough to notice. And if you have now a greater distribution of negative charge on this side and a concentration of positive charge on the other, that is a, that's an induced dipole. This is what we call an induced dipole. Okay. So a permanent dipole, which we talked about last time, permanent dipoles are dipoles all the time. And there are certain molecules that are just dipoles all the time, no matter what you bring near them. Okay, water is a, a permanent dipole, hydrogen chloride. But ordinary matter, can you can actually induce or create a dipole by bringing another charged object nearby. And that dipole will only be around for as long as the charged matter is around. Take the proton away. There's no more electrical attraction. The, uh, uh, the electron cloud would shift back to the uh, equilibrium position. Okay? So this is an induced dipole. Diagrammatically, we're going to represent an induced dipole by just drawing a little oval with one end negative, the other end positive. Okay, so this is a convention that's used in the textbook to show a molecule or an atom that has been turned into an induced dipole by the presence of an electric interaction. Okay.